Hey guys, and welcome to the first ever episode of Stick Time with Matt and Dave. I'm Matt. I'm Dave. And so the goal of this podcast, uh, as we're just starting out now, is going to be... Uh, I mean, this is an FPV podcast for FPV, anybody. everything. Everything. Uh, racing, freestyle. We are both kind of in the racing realm. Mostly, but, yep. So this is going to be more for racers. There are a lot of freestyle podcasts out there, but... Uh, anybody, if you just saw like DRL or DCL or DR1 or one of these drone racing leagues, this is for you. You saw it on NBC or ESPN or or YouTube or Facebook. This and you want to get into it. This is going to be the podcast for you guys. Um, we're going to keep it family friendly. No, no craziness here like all the other ones, and uh, just drug two, use. no, two middle aged men sitting around a table <laughs> talking about FPV. <laughs> no, it, no, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be awesome, guys. I'm, I'm just cracking a joke, yeah. But uh, before we get into that, uh, getting to getting into FPV, that's what this episode is gonna be about. We're gonna give you a little bit of backstory, so uh, I'm gonna pass it over to my man Dave, he's gonna give you a backstory of uh, what he's all about, who he is, and uh you know where we're from and and i think this is going to paint a a decent picture of kind of um the differing points of view we have and uh, especially you guys uh we're just regular dudes who have careers i'm a graphic designer art director creative director kind of worked my way up through the ladder now um but i was just a little a little peon i was working uh, i think i was 22 years old when i first got into any kind of like actual hobby grade rc but i mean i'm i i did your family my, man i'm too. a family man yep, i have i man. have a wife and kids and i've been with my uh wife now for man like 10 years just dating awesome, and through awesome. everything and so all of my growth has really come from that but um yeah, I, I went to college. I went to high school. I was like, this is kind of, I wanted to get into that art realm. I always kind of tinkered with RC as a kid, but so I you're, mean, but I you're did, mostly art background, mostly art background, mostly art cool. background, a design school and art. And, uh, so that's kind of like that's just the career path I followed. And yeah, yeah, dude, that's a little different than from. Uh, I know what you I have got. a different perspective. Yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, and uh, I started out mostly a, a tinker. So when I went to uh, high school, I actually went to a vocational school, Polaris here, local to where I'm at, and uh, I learned the automotive trade. And I worked on cars, got a job at a dealership at a very young age, 17, and uh, worked my way up there to a flat rate mechanic. That's actually pretty pretty <laughs> cush, man. It was awesome in some ways, not so awesome in other ways. No uh, student loan debt, though, and I could attest yeah, going to exactly, art school. That's, exactly. That's... So after I did that, I ended up being a fleet mechanic for a third-party company that worked on AT&T vehicles. And uh, then I... I got that bug, dude. I I uh, started uh, the RC. I started getting into RC. So so I basically just left that job and pursued everything RC to make that my career. And now I that takes a lot of gusto. Dude, it and was risky. It was very risky. But I'm very thankful today that uh, I am working for Flight Test, one of the bigger dude, YouTube RC companies out there. Absolutely, it's sweet. If you guys don't know, we didn't really introduce. Uh, are full cells but that's matt Nowakowski. Nowakowski, yes um and you are the matt from flight test yeah i started working at flight test i want to say uh two years ago year and a half ago uh october 2017 so year and a half about i've been there and uh i'm pretty much everything drones for them i i started out building and uh, eventually got into videos, eventually worked my way up to just kind of the same story. You had worked my way up to uh, basically running the whole FPV drone drone market for them. And now that's kind of a big thing because Flight Test, if you're unfamiliar, uh, I mean, I'm familiar with them. I got into them in maybe 2012. Uh, yeah. My first hobby zone champ when I got into like that hobby grade uh, quote unquote RC. Um I got I I found flight test when Josh Scott and Josh Bixler were trying to land Hobby Zone champs on a trampoline in 
Chad's backyard. So that's what sparked your fire. That's what kind of like well that itch that 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 scratched the itch that scratched I had. Scratched the itch. I like that. I it like scratched that. the itch. It didn't spark the fire because okay. I I I didn't get on, actually on a plane until I was maybe about twenty two years old, and okay. that kind of like. It kind of changed my life because the love of aviation was actually born experiencing it. I mean, I went to air shows as a kid and stuff and like, oh, wow, those fighters. Every, I think every kid goes through that stage of like, I want to be a fighter pilot. Blue Angels, Thunderbirds, exactly. they are awesome. But at the same time, I was also like, my one uncle was really into like uh, indie racing, midget racing, Sick, NASCAR, dude. any kind dude, of racing. that's awesome. And so like, I was, I was always conflicted as a kid to be like, wait. I want to be a fighter pilot. I, no, <laughs> but I never had that aviation itch, so I think that's what kind of like hintered that yep. uh, that that aviation. I want to be a fighter pilot. I saw Top Gun. Yeah, Everybody, but, but uh, you always saw racing. <laughs> if he was doing midget racing and all that, was it midget racing? Is that what you said? I'm, midget racing. Yeah, yeah. dude. I'm so a, he did all these ovals. racing, all these racing platforms. You're you're getting exposed to exactly. So that Any you were of, like, I want to race. Anything dude. that went fast, and I thought it was fascinating. Like yeah. IndyCar, uh, it kind of like a, a quick background of both me and Matt. We are native Clevelanders. Yep. Um, I spent a lot of time after college. I moved to South Carolina. Lived in the. Uh, Florence and yeah, the Charleston and, areas. And I just basically grew up here my entire life. You grew so, up, yep. and, and you're a Clevelander, but we used to have the IndyCar series, uh, uh, kart racing, and I think even IRL did it one year, uh, but they would race here at our airport in downtown Cleveland. Uh, yep, I remember those days. Burke Lakefront. So I went I went every year they came. I never went. I wish I would have because that would have been awesome. Crazy crazy and i mean like that's the the experience you get to see these race cars up close that you see on tv and that's kind of like that was a fun racing experience but that that it's unobtainable to be able to like be like not anymore dude i I looked into it because i was like i want to be a race car driver and the the closest was penske and columbus which luckily we live in ohio and like i feel like any type of racing aviation were the birthplace of i mean like there's cornfields here what do we want to do we want to go to the skies we want to go fast <laughs> so you're like i want to race some kind of rc product I wanna, of some kind i want to race anything and like i always saw uh my next door neighbor growing up like uh had one of the gasser rc cars which i always thought was cool but like the 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 learning curve is so high and the cost to get in especially back in those days we're talking the 90s and dude and and not to mention those are really hard to fly and get running and maintaining and all all the things even the cars and you say fly the gas or airplanes and anything like that was unobtainable my first experience ever with like an actual hobby grade rc thing was when i was maybe like 14 uh went to parma hobby here in cleveland uh but i was rest in peace parma hobby you are no longer no longer in the scene which i'm very sad a lot of us have gone to yeah no longer with us a wings hobby shop in lakewood was my favorite for plastic models even growing up so i like that building aspect but that was the first the first realistic experience that i had with hobby grade rc was uh I got a, a collective pitch helicopter when they made a micro. And I was in high school, and this was cutting-edge technology. Mm-hmm. Crashed it. Like, couldn't fly it. I mean, it's it's capable and to flying Break acro. out the checkbook. Now it's <laughs> $700 later. I got to fix this heli. I think all in all told, I mean, like, this was maybe... I was, I was 14, 15, so we're talking like 2000. Okay, so not checkbook, parents' money. Break out that parents' money exactly. and fix that heli. <laughs> In the checkbook, I think my mom wrote a check for it. But <laughs> oh, Okay, okay. So still break it out, but different person breaking out but the checkbook. But buying your 14-year-old kid a $400 aircraft with a controller is kind of crazy. I love your parents even more now. It was that, my mom. I love dude, my mom. I love... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mrs. Condor, if you're out there, speaking of Condor, that's his pilot handle. But yes. Mrs. Condor, if you're listening to this, I love you. Yes. Uh, but yeah, pilot handles. You're the sidewinder. Sidewinder. But uh, if you're into that drone racing community. But we, we know a lot of you guys out there listening could be in the drone racing community. Could be in could freestyle. Be brand new. And we just want to give you our perspective here. So, I mean, that was that I was 14 years old when I touched the hobby grade and I had a terrible experience. But now there's... There was literally not the internet was in an infancy and wasn't around then and was now that there's, a, there's so much. Was that the age of the dial up where you had to wait for it to beep 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 boop 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 beep? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so yeah, it, anybody it, nowadays. I mean, if you're if now you're a you can Google kid, search it, and that's what I say all the time. Like especially with the technology that's out now in drones, is like I say it all the time. Like if I was a kid and this was around, because I did try. I got into that collective pitch like RC Heli World. I was like, I did try, but it was so hard. There was nothing that I could find to reference. But that's changed. Very much. There's so much community now on the internet. And, like, you don't have to deal with that stuff. Like, I mean, even that's changed from how we got into it, the hobby. Like, it's it's so different. And, I mean, we're just regular guys. And a lot of the investment, like, we didn't have the disposable income to be like, yeah, I'm going to blow $400 on a helicopter. And I'm sure my mom was like, if you really want to do it. And I was like, Mom, I really want to do it. Make this my Christmas present and my birthday present. Like I used to do that. Like, yeah. p- double them together. I want this. And I crash it. I break a piece. It's all carbon fiber and cutting-edge technology, but I break a plastic piece that you have to buy half the helicopter and on mail order, special order to actually get. Then you were super discouraged after that. Like I, I can only imagine the defeat you had in your eyes when you went to go pick up your broken parts, dude. And you know it's broken because it's it doesn't look right <laughs> so sad so when was that crash. was that the last day you went with helis or you moved on from there obviously i obviously moved on from the helis yeah um and and kind of my experience from that uh i mean like that was the hobby grade and then i i took a step back more towards like the toy entry grade awesome very flash cool. forward uh, a long time from when i was 14 to when i'm about 22 yeah i fly in my first airplane and go you know what this has, has changed my view of aviation. I know the entry level to actually like flying a plane is very, very high. I don't have $10,000 to go to get and, a pilot's license. And like, I bet there was a lot more information out there when you flash forward to that. And when you're flying that airplane, you, you can go on the internet, Google, and find everything. Well, actually, yeah. I found the plane I uh, on the internet. I was... I was just interested in looking at RC planes and typing in, you know, whatever I could to find what I wanted to yep. get into. And, I mean, I had a little bit more money. I was 22. I was on my own working out of college. I was living in South Carolina at the time. And so I'm like, well, I find flight test. Awesome, uh, dude. Josh Scott, Josh Bixler, they're trying to ra- land this little yellow plane on a trampoline. And I'm like, well, I got this little space behind my house. Like, let me, let me... I think I could try this. It's a hundred dollars all in. I go on Amazon. Where'd you get it from? Amazon. 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 Eighty nine dollars on sale. I and that's ready to fly. Sold. Everything ready to fly. Controller plane. And I mean, like, we're not talking FPV, but th- we're talking uh, a how you bit, got started in it. A little bit higher than hobby grade. Yeah. yeah. And especially in flying. Uh, I mean, I flew. I played with the Tyco toys and everything from uh, the little buggies you could buy from. Uh, nico rc and stuff like way back in the day but i never got any luck with anything that flew yeah until the hobby zone champ awesome dude. changed my world um flash forward even past that uh getting into fpv kind of changed my world i know you kind of have a similar ish uh similar story. i mean this is where like all rc in general kind of bleeds over on each other so if you're into rc anything airplanes helis boats buggies you kind of bleed over into each other and you eventually find that niche inside the hobby that you enjoy. So when I started out, it was actually kind of the same experience. You know, I was at my graduation party with my cousin Rob, all my friends. So graduation from high school. High school. Yeah. 18. So 18, 19 years old, whatever I was. So and you're still, uh, you're still a young buck. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a young buck. Definitely a little bit uh, less poundage, a little bit less beard. <laughs> Um, if you guys, it, since you guys are listening, I definitely have some uh, scruff going on on my face, and uh, but <laughs> it's how we both roll. Yeah, so exactly. It's the beards are in nowadays. Um, but yeah, th- this is how I got into it. Is Rob, my cousin, Captain Uno? If you guys know him in the FPV community, if you don't, check him out. Uh, he had a striker from Horizon Hobby, so airplanes, which is a plane, yeah, yeah, airplanes, fixed wings, same same kind of scenario that you were in. Um, and he was like, dude, I'm going to go fly this at the park down the end of my street or down the end of your street. You guys want to come? So me and a couple of my buddies were like, sure. And, uh, he flies with one arm. He's got both arms 
It's just one has one no, hand. Yeah, one ex- hand. Exactly. He he flies with one hand. Thus, Both. Captain Uno. Correct. Thus, <laughs> Captain Uno. Um, yeah. So he's only got mobility in one hand. So he needed somebody to throw it. And uh, so I take the striker. I put it in my hand and. Uh, I give it a big football chuck, dude, while he full throttles you're just, it. You're just planning on this thing lawn darting yeah. straight into the ground. No, dude, this thing skyrockets, bro, <sighs> 80 to 100 miles an hour up in the air. And wow. my jaw drops, dude. Like, and I'm like, this thing is amazing. So <laughs> after he lands it, I'm like, Rob, I need, so, to, I need to get into this, buddy. Like, I need to get into this. How to, what do I do? Seeing it firsthand really lights that. Because I had nobody that that showed me it firsthand. I mean, I saw as a kid, uh, we had a local AMA field here near uh, Cleveland where, like, mm-hmm. I would go. It was right by uh, Good Times. The, it was, uh, like, a little, like, putt-putt and go-kart. go-kart. Yep, yeah. I remember. Okay, yep. so, yeah, you're familiar. But, like, we went there as kids, and there was an AMA field uh, nearby, and I didn't know the AMA then. I was 9, 10 years old. But you see these huge, you're like, 4-foot, 6-foot wingspan gassers flying around. They look like real planes. And sky. awesome, making you, the sweet sound. You hear them yep. from a mile away. You're like, wow, those are, like, little planes. And you see they're just, they're, you know they're models because they're just flying tight little circuits and not uh, cruising across the sky like regular planes. But, Correct. I mean, like, I saw those, but I didn't see it close up. So seeing this close up to it you... sparked my interest, bro. Immediately. It, immediately. Now, when you hear it, you just hear it, and it takes off from your hand, and you just hear it screaming like a banshee in the sky, like, just going at Mach a million. Scale <laughs> speed. Scale <laughs> speed, yeah, we're talking. Scale <laughs> speed. Mach a million. And it, it clicked right there, man. And it, if you guys have a local, I would highly suggest if you guys got local pilots just around you, just go and check it out because it will spark the interest. If you have any interest at all, it will amplify that interest for sure. And we're going to we're gonna return on that because that's actually how I got into FPV racing is a buddy of mine was like, you know what? Let's just go go check it out. But mm-hmm. that was already after I was into drones. Yeah, yeah. So, so. I, I just want to touch real quick because no, I know my kind of passion for uh, anything flying mm-hmm. came from my first uh, my first airline flight when I was twenty two, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I loved roller coasters as a kid, and I, I love roller like, coasters till this day, dude. Cedar Point, number one in the world. See, we're lucky in Ohio, and, and we're right next to it. It's <laughs> awesome. But go on, yeah. But the 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 like that's the ultimate roller coaster ride is being on this airplane that like you see like you're, Amen. you're so used to that like plane feel and like it rumbles and all of a sudden when you lift off the ground and it's smooth. It's amazing. And there's nothing it's else like, like you're it. on glass. But so there. when you got interested in these RC planes. Yeah, I mean, I, had you been on a on a, on a real aircraft? I was just about before? to say that. Yeah, I've I've been. I, I was on an airplane super young. So me and my dad, uh, we would travel. My whole family actually, we would travel to different amusement parks: Disney World, Universal Studios, family uh, vacations, everything. My dad was really good about that. That he actually uh, took the time to find the time to take us places like that and uh so i was on an airplane since i was really young but since i was on it at such a young age i really didn't like it wasn't special exactly dude it's not like some a life-changing event i was just used to it so when i saw these rc airplanes that's what was different because i can control them that's a different world that's that's not investing 10 grand to get a pilot's license no not at all dude so i saw this and i actually was like, Rob, hey, man, get me into this, dude. This is what I want to do. Let's do it. And uh, so I I was like, man, what do you got for sale, dude? What do you got for sale? <laughs> Come on. I know you got something special in that little room down there. You now, got locked. And so he had been flying planes for a little while he before had he to, actually introduced them to yeah, his family. And yeah, friends. maybe. I think he started, we would have to have him on a show, but I think he started maybe four years before I did, something like okay, that. Okay, so, so he, he had a collection that you're like, I know I know you have something you're not flying. Exactly. I've seen him in his basement before. We would have holidays and Christmas and stuff <laughs> together. We're family, you know? So, I mean, we both, we both know this now. I know you showed me your pile of quads. 
I, mm. I know you've seen my workbench. So, like, after – it's uh, incredible to think where you start from and, like, you see somebody else's collection and you're like, oh, my God, I would kill to have that. And then, like, literally a year after you get into it, you're like – I have too many quads. I have to get I, I have to get rid of some stuff. And that's that's where my cousin Rob was at. He had too many airplanes you re- and he just had to get rid of some stuff and I was just there to pick up the stuff he didn't want. You recognized it from the store. Exactly. So I go over to this house, I get I was like, Man, whatever phone plane you got, I don't care what it is. Give it to me. Let's go fly. Um, so that's one thing, you know, I had that you probably didn't have was somebody there along the way to actually guide me in the right direction, at least in airplane wise. Now you say airplanes because I want to talk about quadcopters and FPV drones and kind of, I mean, obviously we both have this evolution that comes from fixed wing aircraft as they're known in the hobby. Yes. Um, and I mean, I obviously have a helicopter which is not fixed wing which but i still that f- didn't work out well for which me. i mean i still fly that stuff to today but it's not my true true passion so tell me about drones so you're you knew your cousin and you knew some friends who knew a uh, uh, knew about rc aircraft which is a start but yeah this, so what year is this paint me a timeline okay so airplanes i can't remember what year i started but you're 18 Ish. Yeah, so I, I, I probably now. flew I probably flew airplanes for about five years, six years maybe most. And uh, so right around 2014, I would say maybe 2013, I started to get into quadcopters. And actually the first quadcopter that I actually bought was um, I went to a Toledo air show, or not air show, swap the week, meet. The week signals? Week signals, which is actually coming up here shortly in April, which I'll probably go to. or something you're yeah. running. So. Yeah, so I went there, and uh, we saw this little tiny, it fit, fit in the palm of your hand. I think they were called Proto X. And it was like, you can get, get 30 bucks, you get a controller, and a little tiny quadcopter. No external batteries, it just charged off USB. And me and Rob both bought that little tiny guy. So now, mind you, toy grade. You know, it's toy not great. It, fly it in your house. Correct. Fly it in, the fly it in your house. Get get the your bearings of left goes left, right goes right. I bought y'all. those those little uh, double double bladed uh, the quad blade helicopters from like Best Buy mm-hmm. in like 2010 2011. Like, but they were toys. They were toys. Correct. Yeah. So, but uh, you get the controls. Yeah, you you get to familiar with the controls. So like, I mean, it was definitely different from airplanes because you have no, you have rudder and aileron and elevator and all, all the throttle and stuff. But and airplanes, 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 you hit the throttle, you go forward. You got to keep you that air. Go. You got to keep the airspeed going over the wings on the airplane you to know? keep it up. And, and with a quad, you just got to throttle and you can sit there and hover. You don't have to go forward. But if you throttle all the way up, you're going to the moon. You're going to the moon, which <laughs> many of people have lost their quad trying to go to the moon small movements that thing's gonna carry if you're just starting out exactly and this <laughs> this is stuff that i had to learn along the way and it was cool that i i learned on something small like that um but something small it just it, it was cool at first but then i i lost interest again now see quadcopters i started with something big so i started uh i got interested by something inspired me i i, I mean you got inspired by where did you first learn about quads? What inspired you to actually be like? Mm, was it that good air question, show, dude? Uh, air show, maybe it was more probably YouTube. After I got into airplanes and started searching a lot of the stuff and uh, seeing what was out there, we would watch YouTube videos. Me and my cousin in his basement, we would hang out. Well, like RC, RC airplanes. anything, and then YouTube's got this sweet algorithm. So I would always click and on the recommended, and eventually three videos down, two videos in, whatever it may be, there was Star Wars pod racing in real life. What? I was like, what is this, dude? What is this? I click on that video, and it's so, it's in a completely different language. I think it was French, maybe, dude. And there was a bunch of guys our age, you know, middle age, maybe 30, 40 years old. They're out in a forest sitting in chairs. You weren't that age at the time. No, so they were a little no, bit older exactly. But my age now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm 30 now. So yeah. it, they were around our age now, 30, 40 years old. And uh, they're flying through this forest. 
and you just see these LED lights and you see a quad in front of another quad and they're going through and they got these sweet courses like marked out with caution tape and you're like, what LEDs on the quads, they're whipping dude. It was unbelievable. Mind blowing. I remember that video. Mind blowing. It was a step up from the RC airplane. So literally after I saw that video. But that was the the first person view. The FPV as you hear in the community. Yeah. First first, person view. First person view, man. After I saw that video is over. I directly went to drones, man. Directly went to drones. See and and but did you go your your first little one your toy grade was a line of sight. Yeah. So, so I mean okay, let me correct. There was a <laughs> there was a phase in between where I like Horizon Hobbies where I bought my plane. So they they fed you a little bit with their QX 350 stuff like the that. The blade series. The a- yeah. AP stuff. Aerial yeah. a- AP's aerial photography. So like they fed you that kind of stuff, which... But that was big at, at the dawn. Nobody was racing them at the start. No, so seeing that... No racing. And that dude. wasn't even like line of sight, or that was line of sight, but not even FPV. So No FPV. You had you, the camera feed, but the camera feed was, was so bad. It was bad. like Wi-Fi, I think. Yeah. So you only the had like latency. 100 feet or maybe 400 feet max. They might have improved theirs, but it was horrible. And you had to fly from looking at it because your control link communicates almost immediately where the video lags behind at that time it was almost a full second yep so like you couldn't stare at the screen and fly unless you were way 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 up high and had a lot of time to correct any bad movements correct uh and so like i mean that 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 stuff and and it was crazy to think that you could fly with a, a real life pilot view and you didn't even see how these people were like viewing it in goggles no, or anything. No, it was mostly like uh, they would put on an external GoPro and yeah. just rock. You would see the HD footage. They might have had some like overlay video where you can see FPV here and there, but it, it they did. It, it was mostly the, it was mostly the GoPro footage they would but show. That that high def footage that they were. That's looking what draws people in. Draws that's people. That's what in. people want to watch. Nobody. If if you're not familiar with FPV, uh, the feed that we watch is very very similar in flying to. Uh, like VHS. Yep. There's correct. a lot of tracking, quote Dude, those, unquote. Those old school Disney movies, if you ever watch those. <laughs> I'm a big Disney fan. So those old school Disney movies, you put that VHS in there and you hit rewind or fast forward and you see those white lines going over the video. That's what we see constantly. Yeah. Uh, there's no DVD quality. but and, and so we see that in our goggles, but you kind of learn to look past that. Deal just, with it. From like the actual immersion in the environment, and you well, kind of forget about it. What do we What do we say when we're spotting for people? Fly through it. Fly through. Don't it. think about it. Fly, Fly through, through it. it. Yeah. And and yeah. It, like, but there's static. It's always going to happen until somebody develops an HD video link. But that, we're not even going to talk. That's for another episode. Yeah. Man. No. No. Speaking of uh, me getting an FPV, how do you figure out? How do you get an FPV, man? So what get, videos or what people inspired you to get in there? Well, you. I mean, the videos and stuff, it was, I think the first thing I saw had to have probably been on Facebook. It was the DRL Miami Stadium. Might even Dang, have been, dude, you are you are a youngie in this industry if DRL was already out, bro. Right. <laughs> well, this was, and I'll, and so I'll like say So, like, 2016, this, 17, something around there. Well, that was FPV. Yeah. Because I had been, I might have picked up a drone before that, before I ever saw that. So, I bought... The SEMA or SIMA, however you want to pronounce it. I bought it from Amazon. I remember that drone. SEMA X8. So it's about the size of a a DJI Phantom, but $60 instead of, at the time, I think the cheapest Phantom was about $600. Yeah, dude. And time you got the Fly More package, it was like almost a thousand bucks, everything. Extra batteries, charger, GoPro mount, all this good stuff. Now, granted that DJI is more of like a... I don't even want to call it hobby grade. It's professional grade. That's commercial grade. Commercial I would grade. I would consider. And in the difference between, just to give you guys a little rundown, um, commercial grade is going to be something like AP, thermal imaging, um, any of that stuff where you make a living off of it or you're making videos, photos, stuff. Then you have hobby grade, which is the kind of the stuff we got, you know. The build your own. Build your own DIY kind of aspect. And then even below that, there is toy, toy grade. Toy yep. grade. Yep. Absolutely. And that's kind of like the, the 
you walk into Target, Best Buy. I mean, Best Buy has some actual commercial grade stuff. Yeah, no, 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 definitely. You go to Target, and they you, have the Andromeda or something like that. Yeah, and, but the Sima would be classified probably in the toy grade area. Or Absolutely, middle of the road. It's not super cheap. It's like middle of the road. Get your fixing. So, I, and I kind of picked that up from my experience with fixed wing RC aircraft, but. I think it was maybe that DRL Miami Lights or uh, Miami Nights. What I think it was Miami, Miami Lights. Lights, dude. Yeah. I loved that show, but bro, when it came out. Racing around, still love it, by the way. Racing around uh, that stadium and going through those tight corridors, and the, and I think that got billed on Facebook, and when it got, you know, went viral, and everybody's like, "This is the pod racing of the future." But I saw it and went. I've been flying. Uh, that was yeah. You said 2015, 2016, maybe. Yeah. Um, that was. I've been flying RC aircraft at least with the guidance of flight test uh, and YouTube only. I was alone. I didn't have a cousin or anybody that I could actually do it with. I did it alone and with YouTube, but and the forums, of course, uh, RC groups. There's great Facebook groups now, but mostly when i did it facebook RC groups was the wasn't main thing. Yeah, yeah facebook didn't have the community it was rc groups in the forums and weird off-brand which which are awesome if you guys are getting into it definitely check out some of the forums they're a little confusing to maybe navigate um that's the only thing that i've found hard about it a little bit i always got to them from google search yeah that's the only way i did too but they, if you go to like rc groups and just go rcgroups.com good luck Good luck. <laughs> Just like you got to you got to figure out on Google like what's my question? What do I want to know? Google it and then RC groups will pop up with that thread. Those specific threads yeah. too. It's like But if you guys are listening to this now and you're just getting into it, don't worry about it. There's plenty of communities on Facebook. Go join them. Tiny or Whoop's a great one. Tiny you know, Whoop, Rotor Riot, Flight Test GP, fans, Flight everything. Test fans. Yep. And but I, yeah, it's just incredible the amount of growth this community's had. Because when I did it, like I said, there was a couple YouTube channels I followed, and that was about it. Um, but they kept me they kept me going. I mean, at least for a, a portion of it until I hit FPV. And FPV, I was never soldering anything. I was never really doing anything other than like minor electronics and battery work until um, we like. FPV. I didn't know how to solder. I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to do anything. I glued my foam plane back together. But when I saw that video, I said, "I need to make this happen." My drone in the backyard can't go that fast. Yep. And I'm crashing it. I've already bought replacement motors to keep it in the air because I love doing it so, so much. So after after the Simon, what was your first FPV real racing drone purchase that you were like, yes, dude, this is going to be awesome. I wanted to buy the Wizard 220. Dude, so, I recommend that to everybody. I mean, the Eoshin, Eoshin's got a bad rap with uh, cloning a lot of stuff and uh, taking other people's products and intellectual to, property. Correct. But it, they can't be, you can't beat the price point. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. We'll get into that in another another Wait, podcast. Another, yeah, yeah, exactly. We, but the Wizard Wizard Two Twenty, I think it was, yes, wasn't it? The original Wizard, and I think they went to the S and the S Plus, and now it's the Wizard Three or something. Where you can get six S and stuff now. Yes, but but it was a ready to fly package, and that's what attracted me. I didn't know how to solder. I wasn't about to build something. Mm-hmm. So I saw the ZMR Two Fifty. Everybody's building this Two Fifty, which Two Fifty is now five inch. 250 is 250 millimeters yeah, motor to motor. Correct. They're getting smaller, but the, when it originally first came out, it was 250 size millimeter motor to motor was the standard, and it was a five inch propeller. So you're talking like a square. Correct. A square or a, like a H hybrid kind of X. But the motors were in a square almost configuration. <laughs> yes, yes, or a rectangle or whatever you wanted to call yes. it. Yep. Now everybody refers to them pretty much. Uh, you'll still see frame sizes listed in millimeter, but. You will see everybody just refers to them by the size of prop yep. they fly. Two inch, two and a half inch, three inch, five inch, six inch, seven inch, ten inch, twelve inch, thirteen inch, whatever inch propeller you Keep take. Keep going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ginormous inch, uh, seven foot prop inch. I mean, you've I, built those. Well, a seven foot motor to motor, I think, is how big the last drone I built. Uh, I think it was a 28 inch prop. Uh, yeah, it was a little so, side project for Activision Spyro. A so. little bit bigger. Yeah, um, exactly. which that that needs to be its own episode. Oh, you dude, in. definitely. It'll be another episode. But if you since I name dropped it, if you guys want to check it out, go check Spyro the Dragon on Instagram. You'll see it. 
but that that's an incredible story even from like where we're talking about starting to like where i mean i started buying a 299 dollars it was a transmitter and a carbon fiber frame racing drone lhi 220 and i i bought it it showed up it flipped a death on the first flight. <laughs> I feel you, dude. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because I feel you that. Know how I it know is. exactly how we it is. All have the these struggles, problems, especially back in that day. Oh yeah, dude. It definitely. I mean, you started 2016 FPV drones. I started 2014, so two years before you. But it it doesn't seem too long ago. But everything in FPV, at least in mini quad racing, everything it's light speed. Like it, you're going to start out one year with this and in one month there's going to be something new, great, better. And I think especially when you got into it too, especially in that early age, because you're kind of that first generation of matured mini quad pilots. Yeah, I would say that it is second gen maybe. First gen was the guys I saw on YouTube and Sharpoo then I got into it. Sharpu, Chad Nowak, Mr. Steel. Um, Mr. Steel might even been second gen probably, but... Definitely the guys that stick out in my head are Metal Danny. He was like OG. I don't even know if you heard of Metal Danny. I have um, not known. Yeah, he was OG. Uh, Sharpu, Chad Nowak. Um, I'm Final to... Glide Owls. Yeah, he, he's definitely one of my biggest ins- inspirations to get me into racing and doing stuff like that. I think uh, Oh My God was... Uh... Oh My God was there. He's, he, was... he was in there. He's still... Tommy. Yeah, Tommy was there. Um, Jesse Perkins was always in there. Team Big Whoop, they were ca- called. That's where Tiny Whoop came from. If and you that's know. uh, Team Big Whoop was also uh, Nub. He was a big member of that. A Noob, A Noob, A Noob, not A-noob. Nub. There's not two. Nub. Yeah, there's two. Nubs and A-noob. also another guy in DRL, but A Noob. And then Jet, which is Jordan Timken. He was also so Zachary yeah. Thayer, Jordan Timken. Um, but yeah, those were those were the OG first gen. I would probably be second gen. If you would put put a label on it, so you were you, you kind of were right riding right on the coattails of that, but kind of coming back to, uh, like the the gear that you had, yeah. Because to start out, I had the options of like ready to fly kits, but did did you start out on beta flight? No. What did you start? Well, because what, what beta firmware flight, was there? Beta flight is the firmware now. Yeah. That's like the the gold industry there's, well, standard. There's a couple there's of flight firmware. One. There's flight one. There's kiss and there's beta flight and those are the three like standards right now. But back in the day, what did your quad come with? I started on my first FPV racing quad was Clean Flight. Okay, so Clean Flight. Yeah. So before that, I started on. Open Pilot. The Stone Age. Yeah, and there was, before that, there was other stuff like Liberal Pilot, and uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that Were right. Were you running Simon K ESCs? I, I am, <laughs> yeah, something like that, or... Uh, no BL Heli. One Shot 42, One Shot 125. Uh, these are just software or firmware and that you can this, put on it. All of this, if you're brand new, might sound super Dude, it's all foreign. When I talk to my buddies at Flight Test, like with Jeremy, I'm explaining stuff to him. He's like so confused. Yeah. So like it was definitely. I mean, even when I started, it was very foreign. And the quad that I started on was a Speed X two fifty, and, and it was it wasn't they promoted it as a bind and fly. And I always joked around it was a, a TNF a try and fly. I say the same thing though. I bought a ready to fly, and if I hadn't researched. For six months beforehand, I would have been super discouraged. I spent three hundred dollars hey, on something that flips over and crashes. Bro, I don't know how you did it because if I had if I had just the internet and nothing else, it would be tough. I literally, when I got my Speedex to two fifty, uh, I literally had to reach out to my buddy Scott, which we were flying those QX three fifties from Horizon Hobby, and he bought his from a guy named Greg. And he was off of Craigslist. And I had to text Greg to... I, I met the dude once. I had to text Greg and I was like, dude, I researched everything online. I don't know what's going on. It won't arm. It won't fly. It won't hover. What is going on? He said, hey, man, which this is what I love about FPV community. I'm sure there's other communities out there. But he was like, hey, man, I only met you once, but come over to my garage and I will, I will, uh, I will get that thing running for you. So go over to his garage, 40 minutes later, had it hovered. And see, but that's from the beginning because just a pause of that story real quick. 
Just the other day on one of our on our Cleveland Quad Squad Facebook group, some dude was like, I can't get my first quad in the air. And within two minutes, I think there's like 20 comments on it, like people looking to help out. Yeah. yeah. And that's a huge part of like, I feel like what this community is because I I come from like a, mo- a design, art, music background. It's all competition. But here, it seems like family. And even when we're at legit competitions, everybody is a community. Yeah, dude. That's what I really love about it. And you brought up a good point, man. There's a million groups now. I mean, millions exaggerating. But there's multiple groups on Facebook you can go to, get all this information. And when I, I first started, we didn't even have anything locally here. And I see local stuff popping up left and right. But I definitely have to name drop our local crew out here, Cleveland Quad Squad. Uh, we keep it real. We keep it fresh. And uh, we just rock it, man. I, I love our community. I, I love think our group of guys. And I think, I mean, I was introduced to them through, uh, I mean, literally just going to check it out. I, I, We used to have, I don't know if you ever came up, but we used to have like weekly practices where we just like promote online and be like, hey, guys, come check it out. Come check it out. But that's the thing is like. Or like micro racing. I had bought an FPV quad and didn't know anybody around here was actually doing it. I saw it off the internet. I had a flip of death. I fought with the Chinese manufacturer, <laughs> LHI, yep. being like, I, from what I know, because I researched for six months and I know what's wrong with these quads, there's an ESC that's bad that's causing a motor to restart. The whole ESC restarts. I hear the tones. Send me a new ESC. Yep. So the guy eventually, after a week of like China, because when you email them, they don't email you to 2 in the morning Eastern time. Yep. And so... It's a day every time that you email somebody. But, like, I bought this thing, finally got it flying because I was diligent and researching on the internet. Dude, and you took a big exhale that you were so pumped. You're like, oh, It yes. actually flies without flipping over randomly. Yes. Yes. I can do what I saw on YouTube now. But I bought Esheen goggles to match it because it was just a transmitter. I flew it line of sight for a little bit because that's how I knew how to fly quads. Put the FPV goggles on, and I got bit by the bug. Dude, you got bit by the bug, bro. So, like, you bought that off uh, online, right? Online. So that's how you got Amazon. it. Amazon. There was literally one review on it, and I just saw the price point. Said that's in my price point of what I'm willing to spend, three hundred bucks. And then I bought goggles for fifty, so three hundred and fifty dollars all in. Yeah. I had an FPV high powered Ferrari. <laughs> As advertised, <laughs> yeah, it was of a race. A car. lot, of, a lot of those uh, Chinese companies always like promote it as like the best thing Ferrari out there. But I mean, whatever gets you in the air, dude. And if you get it online or you go to your local hobby shop, which unfortunately a lot of the local hobby shops are few and far between. A lot of them are shutting down. Um, we actually had a couple around here locally: Parma Hobby, Strongsville Hobby. Um, Wings which, Hobby shop. Wings Hobby. Parma Hobby shut down. Wings shut down. Wings is down. Wings is down. Strongsville Hobby actually moved out to Illyria. So now they're Illyria or Strongsville Hobby of Illyria. That's very true. But for, I mean, hobby shop wise. But they they're are, mostly car. They are car. They have an awesome track right next to their store. Correct. And in most of the local hobbies out there, if you notice, if you guys go and visit them, they're mostly airplane or surface vehicles. Or the, plastic model. Correct. Or toy model. Exactly. Toy model, a, a, anything. There's not too much selection of high-powered drones out However, there. However, a lot of our drone stores that we buy from, even locally, don't exist in a brick-and-mortar store. They are like a warehouse that you could go and pick up or just order online and they ship to you. We yeah, have, we have... RC Craze yeah. right here in our Strongsville, Cleveland area. That's super fast shipping. We go and pick up. They sponsor almost all of our local races. Which is awesome. And it's it, they are fostering a lot of the community here. And at least I didn't know about them until meeting up with the Cleveland Quad Squad guys yeah. and really kind of hanging with the crew. And they're like, no, we buy from RC Craze. Like, wait, you're telling me I could have my XM Plus yeah, with, dude. in a day? And that's most, most of the companies out there. They'll have an online store, online gig. But if you ask them or email them, they'll let you go to the warehouse and pick it up. I know, like, just locally here, there's... Flight test. You can go and pick up local stuff at flight test. Um, there's ready made RC if you live in the Columbus area. Buddy you, RC down there too. Buddy RC. They'll actually you can buy it online and go pick up locally, which is nice. But yeah, brick and mortar hobby. That's definitely a, a object of the past. Um, 
as sad as it is, they're they can't compete with what's online. But and that's that's that was the downfall. They got eaten by the online retail boom. Yeah. And the ones who didn't adapt fell by the wayside, unfortunately, because I loved going in there as a kid. I wish they were still around, but now the shopping of going in and smelling that Dude. dusty old model shop, like it's all there's online. still I mean, I, I work in North Canton, that's where flight test is based out of. There's uh Aerotech hobbies out there, and I still go in there just to browse. I don't think I buy anything, which is I, I feel bad about that. <laughs> I mean, I'll buy like props or something that like, I mean, there's something still... I need now. But a lot of those hobby shops are majority surface vehicles because yeah. people are not as intimidated. There's to not be... a learning curve. Correct. You, everybody knows how to drive. You know, you you grow up from it. Video games, driving go karts to. Uh, going and get your temps and so on. And everybody knows how to drive, so they think they can RC drive, which I've actually come to find out that's a lot more expensive than what I'm doing in the air. And we know that our buddy E, uh, Ian, Ian, yeah, uh, dude, thrash. One winner, dude, this guy. He, he just wanted to break from quads, which is awesome. Like, you got to take those breaks here and there. Um, he went and joined this racing group. It was like a almost a flight cl- a fight club experience. You had to text this dude. He had to look at your Facebook, see if it was good. I mean, once you got in, the guy was nice as can be. He invited everybody in, but he didn't want riffraff coming in. But that's in. weird for, for vetting because, I mean, it, there's almost no vetting in our community. It's uh, here's the race. We post it. Show up if you want to. Come yep. check it out if you want to. Well, but... it was a little different with this guy because it was on his his personal property. God, and It was like true. his personal racing. But, yeah, Ian got super hard into racing one year and literally – we would we would watch him fix his tie rods, his uh, struts, his. He would buy upgraded parts. Now he's buying a buggy. Now the buggy's seven hundred dollars. Now the new tires are a hundred dollars. Now the rims are another fifty dollars. Then you want aluminum parts instead of plastic parts. Like <laughs> it just kept going and going and going. And you're running you're running your two wheel drive class, and you have to run in the four wheel drive yeah, class too. So you want both both of them. You gotta buy two. Yeah, you so, gotta buy two. So like. Uh, they all they all cross they all bleed together all all the RC hobbies definitely bleed together. Um, there's some that are cheaper than others, but they're they're all enjoyable. You want to get into quads and planes? It's not that expensive. That's the bottom line. Yeah, it, compared to some other uh, hobbies that are out there. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I I pitched it to my wife like it was golfing. <laughs> Am I gonna go golfing every weekend and pay green fees that no, are 40 yeah, you're to right. sixty bucks? You're hundred percent. Do I just? Pile it all up on the month and or, say, I'm going to buy some props and maybe this quad. Or my brother was into drag racing, dude. He had three Mustangs, like full-size cars, three Mustangs, and he would spend thousands of dollars on new product. On just so one part. Too. That's what I mean. So I have, you can get three, four quads under a thousand bucks. So Easy. you have three, four quads and you can go slam them at full speed into trees and not get injured. I take that over taking a dragster and tr- going 180 miles down the road. Oh, yeah. And then you crash it and it's only 20 or $30 to fix it. If Correct. It even breaks. And, and unlike if you're drag racing and you crash it, you can end up in the hospital. Yeah. So we kind of touched on kind of where we started with quads yeah dude what would you recommend for a newbie though because this is changed i'm i'm into now fpv racing about three years or uh, coming up on three years i just eclipsed two years of actually flying fpv probably not even uh maybe a year and a half Mm -hmm. of really like dedicated fpv racing um and getting into the community the world like you said earlier has changed. Dude, light speed, it changes the light speed. And the technology that I had to start with and go, hey, my initial startup cost was $350. You could get in now, I think the Fat Shark 101 package, with this, which is a nice micro drone, 200 bucks, is 200 250, bucks. something like that. I would even step down that if you've never flown any drones before, what you need to get into, I think, is the Tiny Whoops. The Blade Inductrix from a Horizon Hobby. And kind of the Tiny Whoop uh, brand was made by uh, Jesse Perkins and the Big Whoop guys that you Yeah, I mean, Horizon Hobby came out with Inductrix. But to pop- popularize it, Jesse Perkins from the Big Whoop, 
He really made it a thing. He, well, that's he why made it. It's more than RC. It's a culture. That's why they're that called guy. tiny whoops now. Yeah. Even when you refer even to if you inductress, people are like, "Hey, that's a tiny whoop." And that's because if you guys don't know who this guy is, Jesse Perkins. He actually runs a Facebook group. Uh, he's I think it's FPV Micro Tiny Whoop Pilots of the World or something like that. It's if huge. You, if you if you search tiny whoop in Facebook, this group will pop up, and it's huge. It's over thirty thousand members. And they're all all nice, helpful, and he he just loves flying the tiny whoops because you can fly them anywhere. Well, what makes them so popular? You can fly them anywhere. They're super light. The batteries are cheap. Like literally, they're so light that if you slam them full speed into something, usually nothing's even broken. Dude, one that's like fully decked out, I think, is gonna call you cost you a hundred bucks. That's if you get like the the best camera, the best canopy, the best frame, the best motors, the best props, the best batteries. It's like a hundred bucks. In regards to a five-inch frame, if you get the best of the best on everything, it's going to cost you four to five hundred bucks. Yeah, and you know, so that's what's really cool about the tiny whoop. I'm not a big avid flyer of the tiny whoop. I don't I don't fly them frequently, but I can see where that's a good beginner price point. Where even if you wanted to get uh, the all-in-one kit, Horizon Hobby offers one with the screen and everything for like 150, 170 bucks. Yeah. And ready to rock and roll charger, little USB charger, batteries, everything. And those are things that are awesome to fly because you don't need to fly into a outdoor park because if you're flying a five inch, these things are kind of rockets. Yeah. You need at least you a need nice... safety with the five inch. You need safety and you need to know what you're doing. And I I kind of learned how to fly my five inch in my backyard here. I have six trees on about a, a half an acre of a backyard i have about an acre total um but i have neighbors and the five inches are loud and it's snowy it's rainy yeah our body season our buddy lonnie actually even flying his quad in the back in his backyard five inch he had the neighbors call the cops on him so they're super loud so i can see where you're going with the tiny whoop if you wanted to get into it or they even got brushless ones now like where you can get like a tiny hawk from Emacs, which is still around that 150 200 price range you get everything goggles controller uh batteries everything but they're going to give you a little bit more oomph a little bit more power and they feel a little bit more a lot of that stick feel is like when i recommend to somebody just starting out i say like because this is kind of how i did it and it worked for me mm-hmm. was find something and just keep repairing that one thing keep flying it stop changing all your settings go out to the field fly as many packs as you can through what you have yep get used to the feel and like if you have somebody around you i mean like i was flying my own individual rates i had no reference until i started flying with you guys and nobody i mean it's very rare that somebody just puts the controller in your hand here fly my my stuff Lonnie let me fly one of his it was like a 2.5 inch we were out flying five inch ones and not Lonnie had the micro ripper from RC crazed yep hey this thing's which awesome. is a little like three inch quad yeah which we talk about propellers we said that earlier three inch and so he goes hey just fly this take it easy because he knew I was still a new but like you, he knew I had no reference and that that's a that's a testament to the community and the blind faith that he put in me like I've seen you fly you could not crash this this thing's pretty durable it's smaller the smaller the craft the more durable it ends up being because just the weight of it. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about like those helis and you crash a, a gas powered heli, they're so heavy and so many things are spinning that they're going to break. Yeah. With a little 2.5 inch, three inch micro quad, uh, he knew I couldn't break much, maybe get it stuck in a tree or something. But yep. he hands it to me here, fly this. There's... And that was the first reference of any other quad other than my own that I flew. Yeah, they have a little bit less weight, a little bit less momentum, so they're they don't break as easy. Uh, so I can see where he was like, okay, I'll let you fly it because it's not as uh, it doesn't have as much momentum as like a five inch or a six inch quad or something exactly. like that. Exactly. But yeah. I was flying on my own rates, and literally from the recommendation. Um, that I had found was uh, you need to stay on your same rates. Stop trying to switch around. Yeah, no, dude, find find something and you're comfortable with. Um, Yeah, just just find something. I wasn't even comfortable with my rates, and I don't think it was until maybe a year after I had been flying FPV that you were like, yo, dude, I figured out this tune in Betaflight. Try this out. And you eliminated prop wash. And ever since that day, I followed like, 
the D point set weights and beta flight now comes standard with almost the same exact settings you put in my quad. Yeah. Which you guys out there, uh, if you're just getting into it, you definitely have an advantage. A lot of, uh, the stock settings, when you just get a quad, they'll have the latest and greatest on it. And, uh, you don't have to deal with a thing like prop wash or stick feel or anything. You basically just have to set your rates, set up your, uh, transmitter, how to arm and stuff like that. And, uh, you're ready to rock and roll. Which kind of like that 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 walkthrough of setting your rates and everything is we could get so in depth and our bolt styles and the stuff we've moved through that that we need to shelf that for another. Oh, dude, episode. that's gonna be another episode. Uh, how to set up your quad and what to do. And like even like the rates because I moved through so many rates and like I said, you changed some settings and like expo settings. My buddy that I kind of got into it with because I didn't get into FP racing, FPV racing. Until my buddy goes, you know what? I hear of a race that's going on. My buddy Hector, uh, Trans Am FPV, was like, he lives down the street from him. He's like, I know Hector, don't I? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Fontanet? Um, yeah, I see him on Facebook pop up every yeah. once in a while. He doesn't call. He hasn't been racing in quite. He just had a new baby too. Uh, and I okay, I understand, Hector. If you're listening, I understand. I don't have a baby myself, but I, I get it. Dad I know life. how it is. Dad would, life. Yes, dad life. I know how it is. But so he he had told my buddy Blake, who I had worked with, who like I I had met him because I was like, hey man, could you? I know we have a 3D printer. Could you throw this on the 3D printer? And he's like, what is this for? And I was like. It's a GoPro mount for my quadcopter. He's like, you fly quads. He's like, yes, what? come over. Let's hang out right now. Exactly. So he goes, my buddy's racing. I know you've been talking about wanting to get into racing. Uh, do you want to go check this out? I was like, yes. We go to a QRGO race. It was the first of the season, I want to yeah. say. And QRGO, if you guys don't know, Quad Racing Group Ohio. That's another one in Ohio. Our buddy Paul Atkins runs that group, and he does a great job. He does a lot of the main multi-GP events. He'll, yes. he'll run the line. And we are very lucky that we have a race director who is also an FPV pilot here locally, who is actually one of the best, keeps our events on time, and like... If you, yeah, he might. If you go to his race, he might intimidate you a little bit, but know that that's out of the kindness of his heart because he just wants to keep the race moving and have everybody have a good time. And that's the thing. He's been flying uh, RC for 30 plus years. Dude, I think he said he used to do pylon racing, RC airplane pylon racing, like back in the 70s, How 80s. Oh, gee. Yeah, dude. That makes you. Yeah, dude. And he's an awesome dude. So if you're ever in the Ohio area, and you want to come out and hang out with any of us, uh, QRGO, Quad Racing Group of Ohio. But a that's great place. on MultiGP. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you go on MultiGP.com, you'll find all these groups we're talking about. Um, so if you want to, in your local area, if you go on there, sign up, it'll actually show you what your home group is um, and what groups are around you. You just make a little profile. It takes you no time. Uh, make a little profile, set up your quad, your little garage there, and it'll actually connect you with people that are local to your area. And you don't even need to be a pilot kind of to start doing that. No, because it, no, if not you're at all. interested, that's where you're going to get the notifications and find out about events in your area. Correct. That we I mean, both of us now highly recommend there are, like we said, the brick and mortar hobby shops are gone. Yeah. You cannot try and buy, but the community is here to support you. If you're interested in it, find something. I guarantee there's something local going on in your area. Find it. Just show up and show interest. And I guarantee that those guys flying quads are going to be stoked that you're there and they're going to show you everything they can of like, dude. I got a set. I got a second pair of goggles. Dude, Throw these try on. them on. Try them on. Drive Ride these back. with me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be my co-pilot. Be my spotter. Yeah. Oh, you want you want me to give you a rundown of the parts I have in here? I'll give you a rundown. Let hey, me show you my quads. Dude, exactly what we're doing here on this podcast. The community is brilliant, and that's something that I really, really love about love this. Love it. There's so much that you guys could find out, and we just want to be a small part of that. We both. Uh, I mean, you had your your family, your cousin, yep. and your friends guide you into this hobby. I had YouTube yep. and internet forums, and we just want to be another outlet and be available for you guys for support. And we want to be there. We want to interact with you. We want to hear from you and your struggles and, I mean, your triumphs. There's times that you get down. And, I mean, I had times where, like, I crashed head on into a tree, broke a 
uh, expensive uh, run cam back when they just made the HD recorders mm-hmm. and weren't even making FPV cameras yep, yet. Dude. But they were light, like HD action cameras. I broke one of those and broke my frame literally in half on my $300 quad that I had had for three months. I had to start from the ground up. Yep. I had to take all the pieces off and put it on a new frame, but I learned how to solder. And this journey expanded me, and I can't, I can't help but like share my journey you want to share it with everybody that's why we're here that's literally why me and dave here we started this podcast um we wanted to just guide you in the right direction be like he said another outlet and uh we definitely hope you come back every single week and we're going to be doing these weekly from here on out and we hope you enjoyed it and we want you to come back and enjoy this hobby with us that we are so passionate about and I think that's, that's our timer that's our right timer. there. <laughs> so, hey, guys, uh, glad you tuned in. Check us out. We're going to be on all the social media things, we YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Definitely subscribe. Let us know what you think about our first episode, if we should keep doing it. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Does anybody else in this world feel like me? Feel like me? Feel, feel like me? Feel, feel, like, feel, feel like me? Feel like me? Feel, feel like me?